you guys welcome back to the channel today we are just doing a fairly simple memo cover and these are for the little mini composition notebooks and there's a couple of different options that you're going to get with the pattern so what it is it is a full back applique piece and this one I have used a scallop edge cutter on it that's why it looks like that and you have the option of a little X box design there or you have the option of an applique piece to hold the elastic in so this one here doesn't have any pen loops on it but you also will have the option to do that so this one here has some pen loops there we go and these pen loops here are kind of sticking out from the side so those are kind of what I call a side pen loop okay and here is another one so you also so you've got the round edge and you've got the square edge and this one here is what I call the pen loops on the flap because these ones don't go between they kind of sit on top and so when you put the pen in it kind of sits a little bit more on the inside of the book so you can kind of just push it out a little bit like that when you put it closed however when you take the pen out they don't stick out the side like these ones do and also when you're cutting it you can cut straight across you don't have to worry at all about cutting the pen loops like you do when you're doing the versions that stick out the side however if you are doing this one and you're cutting it straight across I do suggest sealing up those edges with a lighter just because the elastic will unravel otherwise all right so we have that and so you get the you get the, today we're doing the applique version, but I also have another version. So this one has no pen loops. You get that one. This one I've done only one side pen loop. This one has two side pen loops. This one actually has no back piece, but you've got the three pen loops. So what you do is you put it through the top one and then you put it through the middle one and the bottom one. And then that is what holds your cover closed so you've got that one available in there and this one is the one that's sticking out of the side which means this is the one that is kind of on the inside so you can kind of see the difference there all right so today we are going to be doing this one here and I'll just show you the little composition book that fits inside it here. Now, that composition book is basically the standard you guys can get in the United States, but in Canada, they're really hard to come by. So I do have these, which are an A7 version of a notebook, and they are a little bit smaller, but they still actually fit quite well because of the thickness of them. So if you're like me and you're in Canada and you have problems finding them, so these ones will still fit and they will still work with the elastic. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on, this is the one that we're going to be doing today. The things we are going to need to get started for this project are quite simple, we need some vinyl for the flaps that are going to be holding in the book and I am using clear vinyl for that but you could use the same type of vinyl you're using for the front if you want as long as it's not too thick so this is a 20 mil gauge of a clear vinyl that I have for my flaps and I'm using what's called a fold over elastic and that is for the elastic that's going to go from the front to the back to hold it together and on this one I am going to be doing some pen loops so we need either one two or three if you've chosen that one elastics for that and you need a little scrap for the back that's going to be covering up the elastic ends and the one that we're doing here is the one with the applique on it 
So for that one, you need some sort of an applique material. And then for the holder itself, you are going to need a front and a lining piece. So whatever is going to, they're going to be going back to back. So whatever you want for the outside of the cover and then the inside. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over and do the placement stitch on the tearaway stabilizer. And I will be back. And here we have the placement stitch done. So I'm just going to show you what we've got here. We've got the outside rectangle of what the edge will be, where the stitching will go. And if you're doing one with pen loops in it, then these two here are going to be for pen loops as well for the three version. There's a pen loop over there. And these lines that are coming in like this, these are going to be for the flaps. So for those lines, you're going to need to extend them out. So we'll just do that right now. Well, we remember, so just using a pen, you go outside like that. All right, so I went and I did that on the back side and I just extended these ones here a little bit so that I can see those two. You don't really need those, but you definitely are going to need these ones. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to do the version with the pen loops. And so what I like to do for that, the pen loops in this are on the back of the holder. And I like to make sure that I have about three quarters of an inch sticking out past this line. So I just measure with my ruler and make it work. And now we just take the loops and I have little pieces of wonder tape on mine just to help keep them closed. So you fold them in half and then you put the folded side out and if you can see the fold over elastic it really kind of shows you where the center is and on the placement stitch that's what this line right here is it's just showing you the center okay so now that we have that down so you can leave a little bit more sticking out here because this is where the pen is going to go in you can leave a bit more there if you want a thicker pen. So the next thing that we have to do is we need to go and do the tack down stitch to keep these in place. There we have it. Those have been tacked down. All right. And so the next thing that we have to do is we need to add the main piece of material that's going to be the vinyl, or in this case, I'm using another no fray material. It's kind of like a suede, kind of like a vinyl all in one. So that needs to cover all of the rectangle. And now we are going to go back and we are going to do the outline for the applique portion. There we have the applique placement stitching done. So you have to remember which is the front of your hoop and which is the back of your hoop for something that would be facing the right way up. So for me, this will be the front and this will be facing me since it's a book. So my directional fabric, I want to go this way. All right, so now the next step is to go run the cut line stitching and then come back and cut around the applique piece. All right, there we have it. The cut line stitch is done. And so now we need to cut around the outside and you wanna cut close but not cut the stitching. And there we have that. All done and so the next thing that we have to do is we need to take it back to the machine and it is going to run the zigzag stitch to hold this down and then it is going to continue and run the satin stitch that is going to be the edge for this 
And as well, there is a decorative stitch that goes on the inside of the satin edge if you would like to run that. So let's go ahead and do that. There we have, the edge is finished. And I think you can see inside there, there is a triple bean stitch that's a nice little inside decorative stitching. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to be adding the elastic to the back portion here. So you're gonna need some sort of material. I'm just gonna match mine for the applique portion. And I just wanted to show you on the back of my material, it is more of a, a high weave or not a very dense weave material very loose weave and I do have a iron-on fusible stabilizer on the back of mine so I suggest if you're using cotton that you make sure you put something on the back of it if you're using knit you likely don't need that all right so the first thing that we're going to do for the elastic portion is we're going to go run the placement stitch for that and it will also show you the placement stitch for the applique piece And there is the placement stitch. So the cross is the placement stitch for the elastic and the outside is the placement stitch for the applique piece. Or if you're just doing the cross triple bean stitch one, you'll also need a piece of for that and it will be pretty much the same thing. Although with the applique, you get the edge on it there. All right, so to add the elastic to it, what we need to do is we need to make sure it's first of all the right way around. And so your elastic does have a front and a back. So this one, the nice shiny side is the front, right? So you'll be placing it with the good side up. And I like to use a little bit of wonder tape to put over that to help keep my elastic in place. All right, and with your elastic, the right, the right way up, you need to take the first edge and you kind of fold it around and you line the center up. You line the center up with the center of the cross on there. Okay, so you can see that it's the right way around and you continue keeping it the right way and then you turn it and then you will be putting this side over here, lining it up. All right, so essentially you've got kind of a loop, but you just need to make sure your elastic isn't twisted, otherwise it won't sit properly. So you can see it'll sit like this. All right, so just make sure that's on correctly. And you can line it up across the center if you want. I like to leave a little bit there, that way I can use my wonder tape for the applique piece. All right, so now we're gonna take it back to the machine and it's going to stitch a tack down to hold the elastic in place. And then on top of that is when we're going to add the little piece for the applique. All There we have it, the applique portion is all done. So you can see the little cut line stitch. So now we're just gonna cut around the fabric. All right, 
right, there it goes. So now we're going to go back to the machine and it's going to run the satin edge, the zigzag and then the satin edge around here. As well, there's a decorative stitch for this one that goes in the center if you'd like that. And the decorative stitching is done around that to hold it in place. And I do suggest that you take the elastic, which if you're looking at it after it's all done, you've got the inside, which would be the correct side, kind of faces down on itself. And the wrong side is kind of facing up. So I would suggest just kind of tucking this out of the way. All right, and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take it back and run the spine stitching. Now, I like to run the spine stitching now because I don't like to see it on the underside. However, if you want to see the center decorative spine stitching on both sides, then you would put the backing on first before running it. However, I am just going to go run that spine stitching and then I will be back. There it is. The spine stitching is done. And this is the underside of the hoop at this point. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're going to be adding the backing. And if you are going to be running anything else on the cover, another design or something, now is the time to do it before the backing. So you can do it at any point really if you want, just as long as you get it done before you put the backing on. All right, so to put the backing on, we need to turn it to the other side of the hoop and you need to make sure that you have these lines, which are where the flat placements are gonna go. So you can see this was where the placement stitch originally stitch it, stitched. And you need to draw the lines out so that you'll be able to see where the flap goes. And I'm going to add my first piece, which is like a lining piece. And there you have that. So you can see why you need to extend those out. So you can add any kind of flaps that you want on here. If you wanted the regular vinyl flaps, you can put that. But I like these clear ones. And one of the people that has been following my designs for quite some time, almost from the beginning, is the person that got me doing this. So Vivian, thank you, because I absolutely love the clear on here. And so the next thing that we have to do is you need to have a straight edge on your one side of your vinyl, and then you're going to line that straight edge up with the two flap lines. And there we have it. So I know it's a little harder to see with the clear, but this center piece has nothing. And then you're gonna have one flap here and one flap here. Now, if you're doing clear vinyl, just be aware that clear vinyl doesn't like tape. So make sure your tape is not going to be in the stitching area. As well, if you're like me, then your machine, if you were to have this over, the vinyl underneath here sometimes sticks to the base of the machine if you have a single needle. And that is when you get loopy stitches, it's super frustrating. However, if you have purchased clear vinyl, most of the times you can get your vinyl kind of like this, okay? And so what I do is I use this kind of uh, tracing paper material and what I do is I take a scrap piece of that and I go ahead and I just put it on the back here. And then we just tape it down. And once it is done stitching, this stuff, as you can see, it tears really, really simply and it's not very thick. So once you're done stitching the outline bean stitch, you can just tear the stuff off around it. All right. So now I'm going to take mine back to the machine and we are going to do the rest of the stitch to hold all of these pieces together. And there we have it. 
you can see it is all done and this is what the back looks like when you have some sort of a lining on it so you can use this stuff uh, which is what I use because well why not it's free with what I buy or you could use like a tracing paper or you could even if you really wanted to and you want to use it you could use some of the plastic wash away stabilizer but it's too expensive for me this is you know cost me nothing it comes with it All right so to take this off you literally just gently tear along the edge So if you gently tear it like that, you see, you might get a few little places, but they easily pull out of the stitching. All right, so that really, really will help it from sticking on the base plate of your machine. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is we're going to need to take this out and cut out all along the edges and what I'm going to do for mine is I'm actually going to use some scissors that I have and they are a scalloped edge scissor so that's kind of like the edge they make along it you can use whatever you prefer you could use the rotary cutter or you can just use regular straight scissors all right so the first thing that we have to do before that is take it out of the hoop And there we have it. So we have the little pockets, we have the elastic, the pen loop. And let's just have a look. All right, so this is the three and a half by four and a quarter, I believe it's called. It's the little mini composition books. And I kind of stole my daughter's because up where I am in Canada, you would not believe the price of these things. All right? So you can see the fit. There's the little side. And that is how the elastic works. And the pen loops. All right, so there we have it. I hope you like that little project. It's really quite fun when you get into making them and it's nice, you can use up a bunch of different scrap materials. All right, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me. And if you like this project, if you could give it a thumbs up, that also helps me. And I do hope you try it and have a wonderful day.